this operation of the Dumont network had to fold up for three primary reasons. Number one, Paramount wouldn't let us go out for money to run something. When you've got inventory to pay for and um, investment and material and process, you've got to have funds from outside sources from Wall Street. And Wall Street was perfectly willing to work with us. I think it could have happened very well. Some people blame Dr. Dumont as not being a businessman, but he was, but he was hampered. He couldn't. What was Paramount's motivation? Why? Why? I mean, by now they, they could see that uh, there was a future in television. They weren't just protecting their Paramount's theaters. Paramount's sole investment in Dumont Laboratories was for the killing of television as a detriment to the box office of the movie business. It's that simple. They established and were taken to the Department of Justice for having a monopoly by producing pictures in, Par in Hollywood and being the chief of exhibiting pictures in Chicago. Barney Balaban and John Balaban. So the Department of Justice says, divest yourself of one or the other. They came back to the Department of Justice. We've done what you asked. Barney Balaban is in charge of Hollywood. John Balaban, my brother, is in charge of distribution. Well, that was not isolation. But they claimed it and got away with it. They set up stations in competition with Dumont, wouldn't cooperate to let us expand with them in the broadcast communications broadcasting business. So, first reason, lack of money. They wouldn't let us expand. I think their sole objective was to prevent the influence of television upsetting the box office of the movie business. And that all... is still a factor in the movie industry. They would like television to take a back seat and let television, let the, the movies run the movie stations, movie studios. Reason number one, Paramount's number stranglehold. One, number no two. money. Number two, not enough channels. Of course, ABC was faced with the same problem, not enough channels. But we had not enough channels because CBS and NBC each had big radio networks. They could say, you're getting checks every day from programs on your AM radio. Those are going to stop coming unless you invest some more money, local money gathered, to start television stations for a television network on NBC and on CBS. That was a shortcoming on Duma. We didn't have a basis radio network to build on for the network. Number three is lack of channels available from the FCC allocation okay. plan. Okay. Uh, go into that in detail. What about the FCC's sixth report and order? Was that a factor? The FCC considered during that freeze of about four years the matter of setting color standards and what shall we do to use the UHF. Shall we mix UHF stations and VH station, VHF stations? That means real high frequency mm -hmm. channels and medium frequency channels for television in the same communities. Can they compete with each other? So that was settled that yes, we will mix them in those channels. Dumont Laboratories, I had a research crew of about 15 people working very actively on allocation plans for the FCC to be a fair distribution of channels in the whole country, proper separation distances and allocation plans, to set up at least three services in most of the major cities. So you have a chance for three networks to survive, have outlets to support there. When you send a picture from New York to San Francisco, you have to have way stations taking part of the program to help pay for the freight of the telephone, microwave circuits, and so forth. If you don't have an outlet in those cities, you've got to hop the whole thing and pay the entire price, whether you've got outlets or not. So we have on those plans there, an allocation plan for the whole United States. We went down to Washington, D.C. to try to persuade Congress to have the FCC really do this properly. So we had a hearing scheduled at the Senate on that. I took my crew down there with a big map of the United States with a bunch of 
card uh, computer control lights to show the cities and what stations would have in which cities and the separation with charts to show the interference zones between cities. The um, Congress had a committee reviewing that. We had a schedule. I took it down there the day before, set it all up. I went to the Congress and said, we're ready for the display at 10 o'clock. Can you come to the meeting? Oh, we have to listen to the McCarthy hearings. Our general public is seeing it over WTTG. We have to be before our, our um, constituents. We can't come to the meeting, so we scrapped it. The McCarthy hearings were carried by a Dumont television station, WTTG, in its entirety. Mm -hmm. It was watched by a lot of people. I think they learned quite a bit of what went on there. Not that the McCarthy hearings were either good or bad, but whatever it was, it was programming. So that situation had some wrong assignments in that sixth report that made certain cities not prime assignments. I got a call from the FCC about two years later, said, would you please come down and be chief engineer of the FCC and unscramble this mess? I said, sir, it's too late. There are too many stations already on the air. They won't want to be moved to new channels to correct this difficulty. I'm sorry, it just has to stay that way. 